Hi, uh, my name's Ethne Gale and I wrote Starlight. I saw the call for a musical synopsis and I thought that sounds great. So I put something together and sent it in. I really didn't think that they would choose mine, but they did. So it's very exciting. It's about uh, a musical theatre troupe who are travelling through space and they're touring their show. And they're really excited because this is the first time that basically anyone's toured a show through space in the manner that they're doing. Um, and then they are almost finished their tour and they're about to go home. Which, I mean, they love their tour, but they're really looking forward to getting back to their families. And then on their last planet, at the end of their last show, they find out that the teleporter on their ship, which they've been using to travel across the universe, mm -hmm. it doesn't actually teleport them. It sort of, it clones them, and it, it clones them where they want to be, as in, in their destination. And then it sort of, it destroys the ship with them in it, um, sort of by disintegrating it where, where they were. So in effect it's like they've teleported, except that it's their clones who are appearing at the other end, and not them. And they've gone through this cycle, as they've been touring around, of being cloned and then destroyed, and then cloned and then destroyed. Oh, very exciting. All right, so, um, <laughs> so if this is the ship with the, with the cast and crew in it, basically they'll, they'll go through the teleportation process, which means that the ship with them in it is duplicated exactly at where they want to go. That's probably better. Um, but then there's about a two minute window where uh, afterwards this ship is just is, is destroyed it, it self-destructs essentially so we've just got this duplicated ship and it, it's cloned so they don't know they don't know that they haven't teleported they don't know that, that these people here are dead except when they're actually told about it later so if we start with Elizabeth and Lincoln um, Lincoln's one of the performers there are four of four of the five characters are also performers um, Lincoln has a wife back on Earth, and um, he's a pretty handsome, confident uh, guy. He sometimes puts his foot in it a bit. Um, he's quite polarizing, I think. I've had some people read the script and say they really don't like him. I've had other people read the script and say, you know, look, I don't necessarily agree with what he's done, but I still like him as a character, all these kinds of things. So he's a bit of an interesting one. Um, Elizabeth is... Um, the pilot of the ship. She doesn't do a whole lot of piloting because their ship does a lot of teleporting as well, mm -hmm. but she does a little bit of flying the ship. Um, and she's also one of the performers. Um, she has a girlfriend back on Earth and she's planning to propose to her girlfriend when she gets back, um, which I suppose will happen with her clone, uh, but not necessarily with her. Um, the other members of the troupe there is Peter, he is sort of the leader of the troupe, he's the producer, he's not a performer, he sort of just makes sure that everything runs properly, he pays the bills, he's the one who's got the ship for them and there's a bit of controversy around that. Um, so that's Peter, uh, you've also got his wife Claire, um, they have a couple of little kids together, so there's... I don't think they really like leaving their kids back on Earth, but they're, they're really passionate about their, their theatre work, so they've done that for a couple of months. Um, Claire is... Um, I sort of describe her as wearing the pants a little bit in the relationship, even though she kind of lets Peter think that he does. Um, <laughs> she's, she's really warm and loving. She's a bit of a mother hen to the group, but also when she's pushed, she can be, she can be pretty cold and straightforward. Um, and the last person that I haven't mentioned is Mitchell. Um, Mitchell's the youngest member of the group. He's 24. He's also a writer as well as a performer, so he's written the musical that they're performing. Um, so there's a bit of a musical within the musical as well. Um, Mitchell's a bit quiet, but he's also quite self-assured and he has quite strong morals. And um, he makes a difficult decision that the rest of the group doesn't make um, when they find out that this is happening to them in terms of the cloning. Uh, so they all sort of make different decisions uh, according to what's right for them as characters as to what they'll do when they actually find out this conspiracy. Well I suppose if it happened to me right this moment I would probably choose um, the path that Elizabeth and Lincoln take which is to have my clone go back to Earth so that people on Earth didn't know 
what had happened and, and they could still you know, continue with their lives as normal. But I didn't feel like I was setting myself up deliberately to die. Of all of the sort of things that I could explore in space, teleporting was definitely the most appealing to me. It's the kind of thing that I feel like could actually sort of happen because as much as I love the idea of teleporting, I feel like mm, I don't know if we can actually achieve that. And then on a more emotional level, I suppose the script is really about the concept of home and that and what that means to to the characters in it and what one will do to get home and and how we can achieve that, not necessarily as a place but as a person or a feeling or basically the significance of home to, to the people in Starlight. Um, I read quite a lot of sci-fi short stories, which is probably the biggest influence there. Um, I don't watch a lot of sci-fi and and things like Doctor Who and Star Trek are things that I'm not really familiar with but I suppose really character-based sci-fi is, is really what interests me and that's what I've tried to do with Starlight. Uh, basically my process is I, I can't really write lyrics without hearing a melody to them mm -hmm. um, so I'll have an original melody in my head to to actually get it down to get that kind of vibe and feeling and, and emotion that I want to portray. Um, and then I'll, I'll write down notes on that and I'll record myself for the composers. And they don't necessarily have to run with that. And I don't think they have in terms of my melodies, but they have in terms of the vibe that I was wanting, which is the important thing. Um, so I've heard a few of the demos which are sounding amazing so far. And I suppose in terms of musical influences, it's more just really coming from those emotions that I want to get across. Um, the emotional states of the characters while they're singing them, which as far as I've heard so far has been really great. Yeah. I didn't set out to make a particularly complex story, but I think that there are definitely things in there that people will comp contemplate thinking, you know, if I was in that situation, what would I choose? Um, and sort of making them consider what home means to them. Well, I suppose it's always really exciting seeing what you've written come to life on stage. That's that's a huge element of it and it's different again with a musical because there's the whole added layers of things like songs and choreography and, and other things that, that really make it come to life. So that's, that's a huge part of the appeal for me and I suppose telling this story which is not a story that I feel has really been told before. So that's, that's a big part of the appeal and I suppose I don't really know I, what the rock opera company is going to do with it yet. so I, I haven't um, I haven't heard a lot from the director or the cast about what they're going to do so just that element of because a script is always such a blueprint and then everyone else actually sort of you know, makes the house or whatever it is that we're building mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, just seeing how how it actually turns out